Hello and welcome to the Operational Case Study Strategic Analysis for the February 2016 exam on First Class Bakery. So as you know, it's on the bakery industry, on the cakes and desserts industry, which for many of you, you may think is a perfectly understandable one, one that you may feel you know a lot about. And to be fair, it is one that we witness and one that we see every day. But how do we know what's really going on behind the scenes? It's probably an industry that many of you don't really know how it works as a whole. So in this strategic analysis video, I'm going to be summarizing the pre-scene and applying the case to various key operational level models. So if you haven't watched the pre-scene videos already, this will serve as a summary of those. And if you have watched them, this should hopefully tie all of the things we went through during those, that video series together. So let's start off by looking at how we are going to approach this video series. Well, we're going to look at it through the rational model. Now, the rational model is essentially a analysis of an organization, analysis of where it currently is, where it wants to be, and how it's going to get there. And of course, you can see all these various models under each section that help to illustrate where exactly the company is, where it wants to be, and how it's getting there. So logically, we're going to start at where we want to be. So what's the best way to start? You may think the best way to start is to start where you currently are, but that is not necessarily as helpful when it comes to planning your eventual goals. It's always good to have a goal in place before you start analyzing anything else because it helps keep you focused. So in this stage, we're going to look at the future, where First Class Bakery want to be. And as you can see, a few of the key models we're going to look at here as is the critical success factors to the organization, the governance and the ethics of the organization, and indeed a stakeholder mapping. But first we're gonna start by looking at mission statements. Now, mission statements I'm sure is something that's familiar to all of you. It's a, basically a short sentence that says what the company is, what it's doing, what it's trying to achieve. And as you can see, I've summarized that there for you. Now, the great thing about a mission statement is it helps keep the organization focused. It helps keep it moving towards a goal. Whenever they are coming up with a new strategy, they can relate it back to the mission statement and does it fit within our mission statement. Now, you remember from the pre-scene analysis that, uh, at least in the pre-scene analysis video series, we spoke about the possible lack of goal concurrence because of the, the functional structure of the organization. And the problem with a functional structure is that often people work to their department objectives and not to the objectives of the organization as a whole because they don't communicate with other people in other departments. They don't see what other departments are doing. So this is one of the, the advantages of having a mission statement is it provides a goal for everyone to follow for the benefit of the organization as a whole. So what makes a good mission statement? Well, you can see here that Campbell set out the following key elements of good mission statements. So purpose, why does the organization exist? So when we look at first class of bakery, what do we think of with regards to these questions here? What does the organization hope to achieve in the long term? Well, we can see from their plans that they plan to bring in all sorts of new healthy snacks. They plan to break into the branded market as well. So somewhere in our mission statement for First Class Bakery, there should be some sort of recognition of this. So to provide branded products, to break into that branded market, to be a leading branded producer. They're currently a big producer, but only for the retail own label brand. So strategy, how will the organization compete? The range of businesses it is operating within. So this essentially means how are you going to differentiate 
yourself from competitors. Now in the pre-scene it spoke about the branded market being worth 65% of the industry. And at the, at the moment, First Class Bakery mainly operates in the retail only label, which is only worth 35%. So they're currently only operating within a small portion of, mar of the market, the smaller proportion of the market. But then when it comes to the 65% of the branded market, it was dominated by three key uh, competitors. So it's very difficult to break into that, com that industry because of the scale and the power of the competitors. And when you're faced with a situation like that, you cannot compete purely by entering the market. You have to show the consumer that there is something different about your product compared to those major competitors. And this then ties in with value, so what the organization stands for. And I've, I've given you a few things here, such as quality, value for money, and innovation. So what, what does First Class Bakery stand for? And I think the two main ones here are quality and value for money. And now, in that customer survey in the pre-scene, it spoke about how many customers perceive them to be the highest quality cakes, the best value for money cakes available. So should a mission statement be given in the exam or should you be asked to suggest a mission statement, you need to think about putting that in there somewhere. The, the quality and the value for money of the cakes or of the products that First Class Bakery produces. And finally, we have policies. Now policies are more overarching values uh, that apply to all members of the organization. Now this stems back to what I was talking about with the issues of functional structures and how people in their certain departments only strive to achieve for their departments. But if you install a policy on all employees, then perhaps they will all work towards this end goal. So it could be something to do with quality here, because that's a theme that's followed throughout. So a policy could be something along the lines of all people doing their best, all employees doing their best. So that there's installed in them this culture of always doing the best that they can, always producing the best quality products that they can. So now we move on to objectives and performance measurement. Now, the, the case was fairly quiet on actual targets. Now, they, they spoke about that they aimed to bring in new products such as healthier cakes with half the sugar, gluten-free cakes, etc. But there wasn't a real objective there, a, a real, in the next 10 years, we want to have achieved X, Y, Z. And just like with the mission statement, the problem here is if you do not have a clear target to look for, to remain on course for, you often get derailed. There is nothing to motivate you going forward. So I've highlighted here that you know, it's necessary to motivate staff. Now, it could be that motivation is it is a HR issue here because there are, as we saw, there are very few HR staff and that perhaps the human resources people are not keeping the staff on track for the objectives of the organization. That could be the case or it could be purely that there is no objective, no overall statement of objective, statement of intent from the organization. You will also see that I've highlighted this lack of planning as a weakness in the company's approach. So when we're talking about our, our SWOT analysis and what's good about the company and what's bad about the company, is the company's planning an issue? Now in the pre it spoke about the information systems that the company uses and how they were very out of date and they only produced day-to-day -day data. And as a result, it's very hard to look at the big picture based on these facts and figures. So this could be the reason why they haven't got an overall target, because there's no way of measuring the performance of that target because of their current information system. So that could then stem to a question of, 
Can they update their information system and the benefits of updating their information systems? It could be that they, they want to have an objective to move towards and they want to be able to accurately measure the performance of that objective, but they simply do not have the capabilities at the moment. And I've also put a little section here about balanced scorecards, mainly because this is a very key P1 topic and one that if you've done P1 recently, I'm sure you'll be well aware of. And there's, because there's little evidence of non-financial performance measurement. The only thing we really saw was the financial statement. And of course we know, and the balanced scorecard knows, that that's not the only way to measure the, the true value and the true performance of an organization. So on to critical success factors. So these are things that I mentioned throughout the pre-scene and we built up a list of them as we were going through. Essentially, they are things that the, the organization must do well. If they, if they aren't doing them well, the company will fail. If they do do them well, the company will succeed. But sometimes it's not even a case of you have to do your critical success factors to succeed, but just to keep afloat almost. It's the kind of bare minimum that you must do to continue operating at the level you are operating at. And I've put a little bit here about if something in the unseen is contradictory to what we've, what we've seen in the pre-seen, then you should be questioning whether or not this is appropriate. Now, for example, one of the, the main success factors of the organization, which we will discuss on the next page, but we've also discussed earlier on, is the quality of the cakes, the quality of the product. So if there is a, an email coming from you from the finance manager of the organization saying, we can possibly save half the price or a fraction of the price of our cost of goods sold if we use these cheaper ingredients. But the flip side of it is that they will produce a slightly poorer quality cake. We can turn around and say, no, Although it sounds good to save money, but given that one of the critical success factors of our organization is the quality of our product, that anything that jeopardizes that quality is perhaps not appropriate. So a few things here that I've put, ones that the company does or ones that the company should be doing better. So excellent quality, we know that the, the quality is something they pride themselves on. It's something that the customers pride their use of first class bakery on as well. It's one of the, the key things that came out in that customer survey was the excellent quality of the cakes. And good customer service was also one. It, we, we saw when we were looking at the financial statements that actually the level of credit extended towards customers on average was better, uh, or the average time taken to, for customers to pay was longer than the credit usually afforded to them. So that's all about building a good relationship. Obviously, there are drawbacks to that and that may possibly affect the cash flow of the organization, but possibly for a company still, in a sense, growing, it's valuable to perhaps leverage some of this initial cash flow situation to bring in more customers. And then I've put about large retail customers here. We saw that a huge, proportion, 80% of the organization's revenue came from a few large retail customers. So this is quite risky. If one of those were to say pull out from using first class bakery products, that could have a huge impact on the organization. But it does mean that for the, the moment at least, the company needs to continue building its relationship with these customers. And the next two are ones that the company needs to do in order to be successful, but also perhaps could improve on themselves. Now, we spoke about efficient production. We spoke about the perhaps a lack of automization on some of the production lines, particularly for the, the slab cake and the special occasion cake. However, the fact that they are not automated may be a useful factor because it can then be sold as a homemade cake, which of course is another way, another diversified way of adding value, it differentiates first class bakery cakes from perhaps the, the larger brands. So keep those factors in mind as a list of things that the company needs to 
continue to achieve or strive to better themselves in to continue their success.